Hello everyone, welcome to another Shadowlands video. My name is Barack Rashama, in today's video we're going to be doing a guide, much requested, and I get questions about this all the time, a guide about how to sim your character properly for Mythic Plus. So, a lot of information to go over, so why don't we just dive right into it. Let's go. All right, starting out, um, I'm going to do a quick disclaimer. Obviously, you see my doggy bone here. It's just some guy that started to follow me, and I started to feed him, and he, it's kind of like a wolf pack thing, so is what it is in Maldraxxus. I think it's part of the stitch yard. I don't know. Let's talk about disclaimers. First off, if you're going to be simming your character, you need to have a little bit of a ground understanding or a set the groundwork first about how your character spells your classes spells interact with each stat okay and for elemental shaman specifically certain stats do not work with some of our abilities all right namely crit and lava burst right there's no interaction between those two spells okay haste and earthquake that's another thing that just it's not an interaction mastery and our spender spells or shock and earthquake okay so like they set the ground rules or your class first, have an understanding of what your stats do for each spell. And then from there, you can make more educated decisions about gearing your character for specific scenarios, whether it's single target AOE, multi-target cleave, spread cleave, stuff like that, okay? So let's talk about it. Crit, obviously this increases the critical strike chance that our spells will critical strike. For Elemental Shaman, we have a passive called Elemental Fury, which your damaging spells, critical strikes, and heals. Uh, we'll do 250% damage or healing instead of the usual 200%. So crit is actually very, very favorable for Elemental Shaman. That in mind, it does not interact with our Lava Burst because it automatically crits already when Flame Shock is applied to the target that the Lava Burst hits. Okay, crit's very good for AoE, especially because our Earthquake doesn't really have any other interaction with our other stats like Haste or Mastery. So crit and versatility are going to increase your earthquake damage much more significantly because of that. Your haste. Haste affects the tick rate of your flame shock. Faster ticks means more potential lava surge procs, and that means more potential lava bursts, right? Haste also lowers the GCD and it decreases the casting time of your spells. You will see tooltip updates all the time when your haste values change from... Um, your lightning bolts, lava burst, chain lightnings, okay, your, even your storm keepers casting speed can, can in increase. Haste does not affect anything other than that, so why don't we move on. Mastery, your lightning bolt, lava burst, chain lightning, casts, and elemental blast, as well as ice fury if you're talented into it, have a 15% chance to trigger a second cast on the same target dealing 85% of normal damage and generating less maelstrom. This is usually around 40% Maelstrom, I want to say, because, yeah, it would be 40, because Lava Burst is 10 Maelstrom, and then if it overloads, you generate an additional 4 Maelstrom. So you generate 40% Maelstrom, I think, if that math just checks out. Dogbone, get back here. Get back here. Okay, uh, the problem with Mastery is that it's quite a trap stat outside of using Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence, because the more you stack Mastery, the more um, spender spells you will be casting and less builder spells because if you're generating more maelstrom quicker you will tend to use spender spells more often but mastery does not affect spender spells right so you end up becoming trapped in this stat it doesn't benefit all of your spells it only benefits your builders and if you're spent if you're building Maelstrom quicker, you're ending up using less of your builder spells and more of your spender spells. So it's kind of like a double-edged sword, really. Out, but within Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence, I can't change. Damn it, dog bone. You bastard. Okay. I cannot change my uh, legendary, but when you cast Earthshock, you generate Lava Surge and increases the damage of your next Lava Burst by 20%. This is the exception to Mastery because if you're generating more Maelstrom, you're spending more um, Maelstrom on Earthshocks more often, you're actually generating more 
Maelstrom generator spells because of the legendary effect. So Mastery is actually quite useful when using Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence. He's still attacking that guy. I, I literally have to run away. Versatility. This increases your base damage and healing, but it also decreases the amount of damage that you take. So I'm at 22% versatility here. Just give you an example. So I take, um, let's just round up to 11% reduced damage, and I increase my damage and healing by 22%. This is very important to understand because it affects certain spells a little bit. I mean, it affects all spells the same, but it's a little bit more useful in some circumstances than others. And let me explain. So because your Lava Burst already critical strikes if the target is affected by um, Flame Shock, what other stat can Lava Burst benefit from? And that the answer is versatility because you're directly impacting the base damage of the spell up to 22% here for me, right? Specifically in this situation for me. This 22% is also affecting all the rest of my spells. So when we're gonna get into simulations, versatility is going to be a, a talking point for a, a lot of these situations. And I'm, I'm gonna explain what that essentially means in a little bit here. So I wanted to kind of set the groundwork and I'll set a section of the video that covers the simulations as well. So you'll have timestamps and stuff. But this is this was just very important because a lot of people don't take into, into account what their stats will actually do to impact certain spells in their rotation or, or, their, or their damaging spell, um, their damaging rotation, their damaging abilities, okay? So I needed to kind of quickly emphasize that. All right, now that we've talked about it, let's talk about how to sim properly. Here's the thing. Download the add-on called Simulation Craft. You can find it at CurseForge Simulation craft it looks like that on curse forge you download this very very simple okay and then you come into game when you have that downloaded and you type in your space or you press enter okay so you type slash forward slash sim c and a little window is going to pop up and this is actually your character information this includes everything from what's in your bags, your talents that you're currently set up, your soul binds, okay, your gear that you have, all your sockets. Everything about your character is compiled into this code. You can copy this code and we can head over to Raidbots. All right, this is going to be your go-to website where you're going to be simulating your character. Now, there are multiple different scenarios in mythic plus and it is impossible to accurately sim your character for mythic plus it's just it's not possible there's too many different variables and instances that can happen during a mythic plus that can skew information and it's just not possible to accurately sim it so things like dungeon slice or hectic ad cleave it's not accurate at all and i actually don't recommend simming your character for those because it's not accurate. It's gonna give you not up to date false information. A more comparable way to sim your character is to run multiple types of simulations and kind of compile an average of stat weights or an average of DPA, um, damage profiles and make an educated decision on how to gear your character based off of those. And I'll be giving you guys some examples of, on what that looks like. So, we can run a patchwork fight, which is the single target fight. You can also run um, light movement single target fight as well. That's up to you. I run patchwork because I'm quite confident in my rotational play and moving on GCDs where I can keep up my rotation if I have to move anyway. So, now boss fights in dungeons usually don't last five minutes. So we can lower this down to four minutes just for more realism. Four minutes, three minutes, okay, depending on the week. Um, five minutes, um, closer to five minutes for tyrannical weeks. Keep, just adjust things accordingly, okay? So, the uh, information that I compiled here for my character is a Echoes of the Great Sundering um, single target simulation. We're running the single target simulation first. Now, I have here on my character sheet um, high crit, haste, and versatility build. I'll explain why I've chosen to do this in a little bit. 
So moderate amount of haste, comfortable casting speed, relatively good um, flame shock tick rates and lava surge proc rates, good amount of crit, and a healthy dose of versatility. So let's look at also the talents. I'm running Aftershock, clearly because I'm running Echoes of the Great Sundering. It's a fortified week. I'm going to be running this legendary. Most dungeons. Some dungeons I will run Wind Speakers. For this case alone, we're talking about Echoes of the Great Sundering, okay? Because this is the contingency point where a lot of people have questions about. So let's generate these stat weights. At the same time, I'll go into a higher crit rating, lower versatility, and more haste build. So slightly moving my stats around, I can move my rings, I can enchant things differently, I can put some gems into certain slots, okay? Let's, let's move some... Uh, Let's put a crit buff on this ring instead of versatility. Okay. Let's also move a crit gem into this haste slot. So now we're at 25% crit. Okay. So let's sim see this just to give you guys another scenario, essentially. If I ran a higher crit build in Mythic Plus using the Echoes of the Great Sundering, okay. Uh, because crit is really good for AoE. So like that's some people's thought process. Let's just go more into crit. So if I ran more crit, this is what that simulation would look like. And we're also going to look at full HTML reports and like kind of dive deep into what your character's damage is coming from or like what your character's damage is doing. So here's the thing. As I have higher versatility on this character profile where I had like 22% versatility. Versatility starts to weigh less, okay? So there's a certain point in your own character's simulation where versatility starts to weigh a little bit less and your crit and haste start to weigh a little bit more. Okay, so I look at this and I'm like, all right, well, crit and haste are weighing more than versatility. So maybe I need to swap out versatility for crit and haste. But when I do that, versatility starts to weigh more than haste and crit, and I actually do slightly less single target damage. Around 66 damage less. 66 DPS less. Now, there's a reason for this, okay? And in single target, you have to understand where your damage is coming from. So let's take a look at the full HTML report. We can look at per execution time, but we can also look at your damage sources. So per execution time, Earthquake is doing the most damage. And that's because we are still using Empowered Earthquakes in our single target rotation. It's a damage increase. But 24.6% of our damage is coming from Lava Burst. Now we talked about what versatility does for Lava Burst a little bit ago. It increases its base damage, right? But crit does not do anything for Lava Burst and haste does very little for it. Mastery also is not really good outside of Windspeaker's Lava Resurgence. So we don't run Mastery. So all of our damage, or most of our damage, is actually coming from Lava Burst in single target. Still, while using Echoes of the Great Sundry. So versatility is still very valuable. Time spent, we're casting Lightning Bolts quite often, Lava Burst still quite often. Okay, and, and where is our Maelstrom generation coming from? More, a lot of Lava Burst, a lot of... Um, lightning bolts, and still aftershock as well. So we talked about this. This is good. But the thing that I want you guys to understand is that if you guys are going to replace your, or start to gear your character, you need to understand what your stats do for each individual spell. Obviously, if I went into a high crit, right, you would think, oh, so like this build would be better for AOE. And I want you guys to also understand like what's that, what that is gonna look like. There's multiple different scenarios that happen in Mythic Plus, right? So we talked about that earlier. Single target still happens in Mythic Plus. Boss fights, priority targeting ads, right? Mini bosses, prideful damage, stuff like that. That's still a valuable part of Mythic Plus is, is priority damage in single target. But on top of that, there's so many other variables and other situations that happen too. Mass AoE can still happen. So why don't we simulate for the same thing? And I'm also going to move around my stats a little bit here because I accidentally, well, not accidentally, but I put some stuff around and we're going to we're going to move things back. Okay, we're going to run two more profiles, this time mass AoE. So five bosses, two minutes. 
This is patchwork, so the five bosses are going to be stacked on top of each other. Two minutes, That's you, you can do 1.3 or, or 1.5 to two minutes. I usually like to do two minutes. There we go. So we have both profiles here. This is the high crit build. This is the high versatility, high crit build. Um, we're going to run simulations on this now. And I'm going to show you guys what the differences are between these two. And then I'll give you guys a conclusion afterwards. So it's I just need to wait on these, essentially. So it's a good thing I uh, have a profile I'm running these sims quickly. Okay. 16.3. 16.4 okay so crit is still very very high in aoe all right in both situations crit is still very very high and this is important to understand you can do a lot more aoe damage with higher crit but the more crit that you put on your character the same thing is going to happen. Versatility is going to start to weigh a little bit more. It's going to start creeping up, okay? So keep these things in mind. Yes, I'm doing slightly more damage in AoE, but at the same time, on the opposite side of the spectrum, I was doing slightly more damage in single target with versatility. And there's multiple different situations that can happen that's going to cause this, right? Obviously, you're not going to perfectly get out your AoE rotation every single time. Targets move around, stuff like that. Um, tanks kiting things. But... It's important to understand the difference when running certain stats. We can do the full HTML report as well here to see where the execution time, the damage is coming from. Obviously, it's from Earthquake. We're running Echoes of the Great Sun Ray. A lot of our damage is going to come from Earthquake. Okay, Primordial Wave has high execution time as well. We're spreading Primordial Wave um, Flame Shock, and we're getting Lava Bursts out too from Primordial Wave. So your takeaway from this should be simulating your character more accurately, but having a more fundamental understanding of what your stats do for your character. This video was a little bit out of the ordinary, unorthodox, not very like scripted, essentially, but I hope it's something that you guys can learn from. Keep in mind also that these simulations are done with like full buffs, okay? So that means like arcane intellect, like you're, you're bloodlusting, you're, you have an augment rune on, wind fury totem, chaos brand from a demon hunter, okay? Mystic touch from a monk. Like your f best feast, your flask, your potioning, okay? So that's all of the situations like this, okay? All of the simulations are like this. So it's not like you're accurately going to get these numbers every single time that you run into this situation. We could also run a two to three target simulation as well. Let's run three bosses, three minutes. This was the uh, high versatility, high crit build. I decided to go for a high versatility, high crit, because I wanted my damage profile to be more well-rounded rather than just upfront burst really heavy and then not have a lot of boss damage. So the versatility or prideful damage, boss damage, priority target damage. So versatility really helps with boss damage, prideful damage and priority target damage. So I wanted to have a healthy amount of versatility. I think it's more well-rounded. I think it's more of a healthy build for the elemental shaman uh, from the testing that I've done and Obviously, the more gear that we get, the easier it's going to be for us to reach the uh, the diminishing return caps on some of these uh, some of these stats, and we can get even even better results out of it, right? So, yeah, I hope this was informational. So, I, I want to give you guys more of a visual and an understanding of, of how to sim your character a little bit better. Um, if you still have questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comment section down below. I stream on Twitch.tv slash Brock Rishama. Come to my Twitch page, ask my questions there. Join my Discord community. You guys can ask questions there as well. I hope this was very, very useful. If you guys um, also want to support my Patreon page, I'll leave that link in the description of the video down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. If you like videos like this, more informational, more guide-related content, more off-the-cuff kind of stuff, more realistic, less scripted, stuff like that. Uh, let me know what your thoughts are, and, and I, I'd love to read them. I hope this was helpful. I'm going to stop rambling now. I hope you have a great day. Till next time, keep calm and maelstrom on. Bye-bye.